all, welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller, Recruiting in Yoga Pants. This week we are going to talk about how to read a job description like a recruiter. I would love to say this is going to blow your mind, but I don't like to overpromise. <laughs> I hope what it will do is give you a different way of thinking about your resume and applying to various roles. I think a lot of us get very caught up in keyword matching. Keywords are important. I'm, I'm not gonna try to convince you that they're not, and I have talked about keywords extensively. <laughs> There's a couple of videos I want you to watch. First of all, my hiring manager's biggest complaint, which is keywords, and then also um, how we use keywords. So that may be helpful context before watching this video. So if you've not seen those, you might wanna check them out real quick. But let's just jump into it, okay? So I want y'all to understand how important context is. So, when I read a job description, and of course I have the benefit of having the hiring manager, you know, in my office sometimes, or I can chase them down, or I, you know, can, we have a meeting set up, what have you. And so I do have the benefit of digging in a little bit more and saying, okay, your job description says this, what do you really want? What does good really look like on a resume? I want to help you use the job description to try to tease out some of that same data. So, when I am ready to apply to a role, where's the whiteboard? Okay, this is, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab my job description, and there are three sections, I think three, maybe two, possibly three, that I wanna hone in on. I really wanna spend some time with and pay attention to and leverage to cross-check my resume. The first section, we're gonna call it, this is the list of what I'm gonna do every day. Day in the life. Could also be key responsibilities. I think that's what my org uses, okay? So anything like that, this is section one. Anything like that that tells me what am I gonna do exactly, right? So a recruiting role could be, um, you know, is gonna partner with hiring managers and sourcing recruiters to build candidate pipeline. Okay, I wanna make sure my resume speaks to that. Now, I actually took this a step further and I found a job description, not one of mine. I am not recruiting for this organization. I don't even remember who they are. It's some, some defense contractor, I forget which one. But I pulled up one of their job descriptions to use as an example. And in this case, I skipped past all the, you know, opening, um, you know, we're who we are and we do what we do and you know we have locations everywhere blah 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 it doesn't matter don't care none of that's going on in my resume but honing into what they are referring to as required experience this is kind of that day in the life you know this is what i'm going to do i will tell you what we talk about first is often the most important this is just maybe a subconscious thing that as we're writing a job description, we immediately are like, oh shit, I really need somebody who can do this. And we write that first and, and I really need this other thing. And, and you know, this would be a nice to have. And then it starts almost, th this is anecdotal at best, okay? <laughs> but I feel like there's a logic behind it. And my personal experience bears this out. The further down that list we get, the less critical those things become. So in this example that I stole off the internet, very first line, it's a big one. Hardware design of RF-based systems, including board level schematic design, PWB layout, test and integration with software. That's the first line of the required experience. So a day in the life section might look something like um, you know, you will design hardware, including board level, blah, 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 
and do your own testing and integrating with software to make sure that it works. Now, some folks might look at that and go, oh yeah, RF, keyword. Oh yeah, PWB layout, keyword. But where's the context? Have you actually done hardware design? This is important. You have to be go beyond the keyword because I'm gonna look at your resume and go, okay, they put RF on their resume. What did they do with it? What did they design? What did they improve? What did they build? Were they just coming behind the engineer and plugging something in, right? Like, this is what I need to know. What did you do? And that's just the first line, friends. The second line also says, must have, must, required. These are important words because guess what? If that is not on your resume, you are not qualified for the job. If you do have it, put it on your fucking resume. Seriously, yeah, I, 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 if I had a nickel for every time a job seeker emailed me or messaged me and said, Amy, I'm interested in this job and I don't have this on my resume, but I've done it. Flames on the sides of my face. I, I just want to scream. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm empathetic. I get it. I, I feel bad that this isn't more broadly known and we don't talk about it more, but that's why I'm talking about it now. And if you got that reference, first person to tell me where that flames on the side of my face came from, I'll get you a little gift package. A little recruiting and yoga pants swag coming your way, okay? Drop a comment. Let me know where that's from. Bonus points if you name the person who said it. Okay. So this is important. Second thing, must possess, must have a strong design background of RF filters, couplers, and then there's some other stuff. It's gotta be there. The context has to be on the resume. I can't just say, oh yeah, RF filters is on the resume. I need to be able to understand the context in which you were exposed to this technology. Okay, so that's section one. I'm gonna look at this day in the life, right? Section two, no surprise, basic minimum qualifications. I had, oh, okay, I, yeah, I can't read my handwriting. This could be our BQs and our PQs. Okay, so I'm going to look for that. This is where we're potentially going to find educational requirements. This is where we're going to see years of experience required, right? And so again, going back to my sample job here, it specifies must have, requires, requires a bachelor's degree, but not just any degree. No basket weaving degrees need apply must have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering or related science, engineering, or mathematics field. If you do not possess one of those STEM degrees, you are going to be rejected. I don't make the rules, okay? And you could argue amongst yourselves if that is fair. I think for the kind of design engineer this is, I ain't mad at it. Make sure it's on your resume. It also specifies eight years of job related experience. Now, what's interesting about this one, because you might be up in arms and, well, you know, get it. I have a PhD in it. Cool. Guess what? If you have a master's, they're going to lower the years to six. They can do that. that that's, that's acceptable from an OFCCP compliance perspective. But you see where I'm going with this? I'm going to hone in on that section and I'm going to make sure that I have a hundred percent of the minimum or basic qualification requirements and hopefully as many of the preferred, right? And so let's talk about the preferred. On this example, it actually says EM layout modeling of circuitry and transition highly desired. So we've got some other little technical terms in there. 
desired. This is where a hiring manager might start separating. You know, I sent them 10 resumes, they might narrow it down to six based on the highly desired. So as much as you can provide context and experience and accomplishments around the nice to haves, that's going to increase your chances, okay? And then the third section I'm gonna look for is, I'm just gonna call it extras. I don't really know what else to call it, <laughs> but I want to identify, are there any other nuances to the job? Are there any, are there location restrictions, right? I wanna know, like, is this hybrid? Is it on-site five days a week in, you know, Virginia, whatever. So I wanna look for any of those little extra tidbits. A lot of times at the bottom of the job description, you might see qualifiers. Here's one now, security clearance. This job requires the ability to obtain a DOD security clearance. It doesn't say that the clearance is required. You don't have to have the clearance today, but you have to be able to get it. Not unlikely that they will prioritize candidates who have a security clearance. That, that would not surprise me in the slightest. Also, due to the nature of the work, also not surprising given the nature of this organization and what they're looking for, have to be a US citizen. Again, argue with the government, not with me. <laughs> okay, I don't make those rules. But these are some of those little extra nuances that are not necessarily role related. Like I can be a hardware engineer without being a US citizen. I can design circuit boards without having a security clearance. But for this job, if I'm about to hit apply on this job, you best believe I'm going to make sure that my resume leaves no doubt that I have done this kind of design work, I've touched this kind of you know, testing and integration and the different technical aspects that they're asking for. Best believe I'm gonna make sure that my education, my security clearance or ability to get a security clearance is on my resume. And I'm probably gonna add a little sidebar, US citizen. I see those a lot because I also work for a company that has some of those restrictions. We have slightly looser than that. No, I have to be a citizen, but a US person, right? Which is a different category. So I get that and I understand the why because it comes from, again, the government. But these are things that I'm going to explicitly call out on my resume because I know how my resume is being read because I know how to read the job description like a recruiter. All right, y'all. I hope that helps. A lot of, lot of info I threw at you. Hopefully it made sense. <laughs> so please do yourself a favor. Next time you're about to apply to a job, before you do that, I want you to take the job description, print it out, grab a highlighter, do it on a Word doc or whatever if you're so inclined. I'm old school, I like to print things out and write, and write things down. And start highlighting those key things, right? What is required? What is a must have? What is non-negotiable? What are some of those extras? Clearances, education, things like that. Highlight those and then go to your resume and make sure you can highlight the same things. Because if it's on the job description and not on your resume, your odds, well friends, let's just say they're not in your favor. All right, y'all, I hope that helps. I understand not every job description is super clear. I have a video on that too. So go take a look at that one. Lots of homework for you in this week's video. <laughs> Let me know what you think. If there's more on this topic you'd like to tackle, happy to dig in. And uh, who's getting a swag box this week? Hmm? Let me know down below. And we'll see you next week.